Hey everyone, it's been a little while, but I've got a new video for you today. This time we're going to cover the latest update to the CR Studio 2.0 software. First, I'll show you how to get the latest update for both Windows and Mac, and then we'll look at the latest feature, which is the realignment tool, which uh, is going to be very useful for a lot of people that want to export their models into other CAD software. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to want to do is head over to the Creality website, which should be www.creality.com. Head over to support on the top menu, and then we'll go over to the official download center and the software and firmware. And once you click on that, you'll have a few different areas on the side. We want to look at the ecosystem. And here you'll see a lot of their software or firmware for different scanners and laser engravers and the sonic pads. So if you just keep scrolling down, the one we are interested in is the CR Scan Lizard. And what we're looking for is the accessory software, which is the CR Studio uh, V2. So in this list, you'll see the two latest updates for Windows and Mac, and they should both say July 10th, 2023. So the official version number for CR Studio version two is going to be 2.5.12.0067. So that's for Windows. And then for Mac, you're going to have CR Studio version two, 2.2.7.0049. So whether you're using Windows or Mac, just make sure you pick the right one and making sure we're picking the July 10th. If you go any earlier, you're looking at January 31st. So this is the video I'm doing for July 10th. And if we click on the release notes, they're pretty much the same for both uh, operating systems. The only difference is the Windows will have that the CR Studio will now automatically adapt hardware. So this just means that because this, the CR Studio software can work for a couple of the scanners from Creality. You got the, the Lizard scanner and uh, the CS01, I think it is, the Scan01. When you plug that in and start the software, it should automatically detect what scanner you have instead of you having to select it for the software. I don't know if that's already part of uh, Mac because I don't have a Mac system, I'm using Windows and that's why I've downloaded this version. But the rest of the release notes should be the same. So we have some optimized UI, optimized manual alignment panel. So I'm assuming there's something to do with the manual alignment. I might do that on a different video if I find there's a big change. Otherwise, the main point we're looking at today is the model reorientation tool. And this is great for rearranging or reorientating the XYZ axis of your model so that you can export it into different CAD packages and it's just a bit easier to work with. So I'll demonstrate it to make more sense, but it's a good tool to have it. So I'm glad they've released that. So what you'll do is simply click on download. Now I do often get warnings through Windows and it might happen for Mac as well, I'm not sure, but I do get errors saying that um, this software isn't trusted. I'm assuming that's because it's coming from China and there's not a huge install base for this software. So automatically I'm assuming like through Microsoft servers that it sort of throws a few flags, but there is nothing to worry about with this software. It's completely safe to use as far as I know. Anyway, I haven't had any issue. So download that. You can just ignore the errors and continue to download. You may also get errors when trying to install the software saying that like, do you trust this software? You can say, yes, I haven't had any issues with it myself. With the software downloaded and installed, make sure you don't have the software open when you install it. Otherwise it's going to ask you to close it first. So close the software if you have it open, install the software, and then we'll jump into the next part, which is reorientation tool in the software itself. So let's jump into that. All right, now into the fun stuff. So I've got CR Studio version two open here, the latest July 10th update. And I've just got a common model that I usually show, which is this little unicorn statue. I've already scanned and processed it. I um, just want to show you what this reorientation tool does. And you probably won't be able to see it because if you try and find it, it's not really obvious where this tool is. Once you have processed the model and you're in this fusion layer, if you go right up to the top right hand corner, where my mouse is, you'll see this little icon in the corner here. It says reorientate. So that's the reorientation tool. So what is it? Well, when you have 
a 3D model, there is technically a coordinate system for it. So you'll probably notice that when you process a scan, it ends up kind of like just floating off in space like this. And it doesn't really have like a front and back or top and side. And you should have this little view cube down the corner here. So if we sort of rotate this model around, uh, we can see actually I'm kind of in the way here, but it's actually underneath me just here. There'll be a little cube here and you can click on the different faces. So currently if I click on back, the software thinks that this is the back face or back view of this model. And so this is where you might wanna reorientate it so that when you do export it to a different software, it can kind of match your views. And software in particular that I'm talking about is either like Blender or Fusion 360 or SolidWorks or Inventor, all those kind of CAD packages typically work with like a some sort of cube 3D based coordinate system. And so it's nice to be able to import a model and kind of have it as close as you can to that 000, zero point. So you don't have to kind of manually go in and try and adjust its point. So I'll give you an example. Um, so this is just freshly scanned, processed, and it's just floating off in space. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it as it is. So if we go to file, export, pick your location, and we're just going to export it as an OBJ file and we will call it uh, default. That way it exports. Now we will do a comparison to reorientating the model so it's a bit closer to like a, a proper zero zero point. So to use this tool, you go up to the top right hand corner where it says reorientate and you click on that. And it's a little confusing. You end up with kind of three points, one, two, three. So you can imagine if you drew like three points on a surface and it will create a triangle and then that creates a plane to work from. So what you want to try and do is pick three points of like a, where you want the base and that will create a flat plane in that area. So we can see that it's kind of like making this plane just where it thinks it's going to start, which is here. And you might be clicking around and thinking like, how do I actually do anything with this? So this is what you actually do. You need to right click on the point first and then right click where you want it to go. For this model, we basically want it to sort of look like this. So we want our front face, maybe here, top view. Uh, this bottom part is gonna be our bottom and kind of like our ground plane, I suppose. We will probably try and get this plane on the ground plane. So what I'll do is I'll right click on our first point and just probably pick a point here right click on our second point and then right click again maybe on an opposite side so we can sort of see we're getting something here but it's still based on this final position so we'll click on this final one and we might just click over to the side here so you can see what i've done i've kind of made this plane on the ground plane and we're not done just yet though so now we can click on the bottom button which is reorientate and it will take you to the next stage of this tool so here we can do just a little more fine tuning. So this is now considered our front, uh, you can't see it, but there'll be a view cube down in the corner here. And this is, if I click on front, it's gonna think that's the front face. So now I have a couple more tools, these sort of corner axes that you can click on. So if I was to left click on one of these, you can see it's kind of tilting the model in this direction. It's not really intuitive, but it is what it is. And same thing for this other side. If we click on that, it's kind of like moving it in that direction. So what I suggest we do first is probably click on say a front view, zoom right in. We can sort of see where our plane is, but it's still kind of, it's just sort of raising up on this side a bit. So we might want to adjust that slightly. I mean, it's not the most flat object, but we might be able to cut, cut that off in other software, but that should be good. And then we can sort of like um, left click to drag bring our right view and we can just check that this looks as, uh, all right as well because it might be something like this you know so if we look at a front view here it looks all right but then we look at a right side and it's not quite right so we can just sort of bring this back to a flat plane uh, we might just check the top view as well so we can see it's it would be nice to be able to rotate it in another direction as well but i think that's sort of the best we're going to get in that particular view you also do have a couple of tools on the side. So a per perspective view in a parallel. I recommend working in a parallel because that means everything is going to be straight lines to your eyesight, whereas perspective is going to pull things into a vanishing point. 
Uh, so for example, if I was to go to a top view and go to perspective, it just doesn't give you the best view because everything's sort of like pulling in towards your eyesight, whereas parallel is just gonna keep everything kind of like a, a real life size. So anyway, we can sort of go to our view side view. We can see it's sort of lifting a little bit on this side, so we're gonna adjust it a bit, rotate around to this side. That looks good. And then we can simply apply. So we can see that should be much better now. And I'll give you an example. So if we then go to file export and we're going to call this realigned, and then we're going to head over to uh, a couple of programs Bamboo Studio for 3D printing and also Fusion 360 so you can see what happens in those softwares. Okay, so over in Bamboo Studio, which is just a 3D printing software slicer for uh, Bamboo Lab printers. The first one we're going to do is drag and drop in the default 3D scan that we did and then we'll compare that to the realigned uh, scan that we did. Bring in our default object first just to show you what that would look like so we drag and drop and you can see because of that orientation that was native to the uh, CR Studio software it's just kind of like in this weird angle. So this means that to 3D printer, you're gonna to have to do some extra steps like set a ground plane and so forth. Now, if we instead bring in our realigned object, you will see that it's actually got a ground plane because we set that ground plane to its base. I mean, it's not a huge issue for uh, slicing software because a lot will have like a, an auto orientation sort of tool, which it's, it is actually having a problem here too. Oh yeah, there we go. We can usually just click on a button to sort of realign that. So it's not a huge issue, but if I jump over to Fusion 360, I'll show you where it can be a little more of a pain. So, so now we're over in Fusion 360, which is a CAD package by Autodesk. It's a really good tool. I recommend you learn it. And I've uploaded our default and our realigned object. So we can see our origin here. And if I was to right click on our default and go to insert into current design. And so you can see what the problem is here is that it's brought it in, but it's floating off in space at a weird angle. And it's going to require that we have to manually adjust this and make a lot of fine tuning to try and get it in the correct position. So, I mean, you can bring it in like that, but it is a little bit of a pain. So what happens if we now bring in our realigned model? So we can right click on it, go to insert into current design. And there we go. It is pretty much exactly where we want it. You can see our XYZ coordinate system where our center origin, our 000, is right here. And it's pretty much dead on with that. The only thing we would need to do is just make a slight adjustment like this to try and straighten it out if we needed to, maybe about there, and then go okay. So much, much simpler to bring this model in compared to this model where it's just floating out in some random orientation. And from that, you can then start modeling over this or reverse engineering. Same thing would go if you brought it into Blender. The realigned model is going to be much closer to your center origin point than the default one is going to be. As you can see that the reorientation tool is a very useful tool for CAD designers or 3D modelers for those that are wishing to take their 3D scans and bring it into these different modeling softwares and just make their life a little easier with having to bring the model into a point that's sort of like a common working ground. So I hope you enjoyed this model. If I find any other features in this update which I think are worth doing a video on, I'll definitely do another video. Otherwise, if you found value in this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Your support means a lot. I definitely want to try and get more videos out now. I've, I've finished university, so I've got my degree in industrial design and I can finally get some more free time. But even free time these days is a little limited because of my new job that I'm currently doing. Maybe that warrants its own video in the future uh, where I can talk about what I'm currently doing now and where I want to continue with these kind of videos. I hope you enjoyed it. Please thumbs up the video, subscribe to the channel, help me grow, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.